Today on our Talk Desk Talks, we have Bill Welch, our president and COO, who is coming up on his one-year anniversary at Talk Desk, which is why I thought um, we would have him on in January so we could uh, learn more from Bill, but also do a little bit of a look back for him and a, and a bit of a look forward. So thank you, Bill. Um, also, you are uh, hot and heavy and closing out the quarter and closing out the year. So also really appreciate you taking the time um, to meet with with folks today. This is one of uh, my favorite things to do um, is to learn more about our executives. So um, very much appreciate the time um, from you. And I just want to start off as you've been here a year. Um, the question that I've started off both Neville and Ryan with is, what is one thing that surprised you about Talk Desk that you, once you got here, that you didn't learn about the interviews or hear about. So as you sort of experienced it, was there something that surprised you? Well, let me just correct you right away is that I've been here 292 days, six <laughs> hours, 31 minutes. Okay. Uh, counting, and, right. And yes, I am, I am counting, but uh, no, I haven't been here quite a year last right. yet, but uh, it's been quite a, it's been quite a journey so far. I'm very grateful for a lot of the individuals that are on this call. Uh, you have, made my immersion into this company very easy. Um, you have taught me much. You have um, put me in front of prospects, in front of customers, uh, in front of partners, and in front of many of you. Uh, and it's something that I'm gonna continue doing. Uh, it's something that's really, really important uh, because as goes all of you, goes this company. Uh, every action or inaction you do each and every day will drive the outcome of this company. Let me say that again. Every action or inaction that you do will drive the results of this company. And so what are what is one thing that surprised me? Um, really, it was opportunity. Uh, I, I, I was overwhelmed by the opportunity that we have. There's two words that I use all the time when people ask me, how do you describe talk this? I just had a meeting with a, a prospect this morning uh, of somebody that wants to come to work here, uh, somebody that we're, we're trying to close. And uh, I said to that person, I said, hey, there's two things that really, you know, really describe what I see at the company. One is opportunity and the second is maturity. Uh, opportunity is, is enormous. It's immeasurable. It is up to us uh, to harvest that opportunity. I think the second thing, though, is is maturity. Uh, you know, and that's not a bad word. Um, I know that when my son was 12 years old or both of them, you know, I didn't talk to them about things that I should, you know, when I were 18. Uh, it's the same thing here. We are growing. We are maturing. Uh, and that's an okay thing. We, we should not be frustrated uh, with, you know, sometimes the status of where we are. Uh, what should be is concern. We should think about what we can do to be better. But those are the two words that um, I think about. And one of the things that surprised me is just the unbelievable untapped opportunity we have as a company. I love that. And that sort of leads me a little bit into my next section that I want to talk about, with, which is leadership with you, because obviously we can't get to where we want to get to and we can't be who we need and want to be um, without great leaders. Um, and so uh, just looking back at your career, what are some characteristics of great leaders that you have worked either for or with um, that really stood out to you and made them who they made them a success, made them be a success? I guess, I guess I would say that the ones that I've had the privilege of working with, uh, and I work with many great leaders from CFO organizations. I mean, look, currently I work with great leaders as it is now. I mean, I've had the privilege of working with Sydney at three companies, our CFO. I've had the privilege of working with Neville. Um, you know, what I will say to you is, you know, working with David and um, obviously working with Tiago and, and, and working with... Uh, you know, Ray and CK formerly, you know, Kathy, Shane, I've been very privileged. And what I mean by very privileged is in the interactions I've had with some of the best leaders are these are individuals that will tell you the truth. I guess the best characteristic of a leader is just tell the truth. Um, I have adults on this call. Because, you know, I don't have any six-year-olds or maybe I do. Maybe you've invited some of your kids to join this call and maybe they'll actually learn something. But <clears throat> what I will share with you is that we all are adults. We all have free will. We all have the opportunity to take information and make decisions for ourselves. And I think the best thing that I've seen as, as a characteristic of a, a great leader is somebody that's incredibly transparent, 
somebody that's incredibly authentic and somebody that's going to tell you the truth, even when you don't want to hear the truth. What do you call, um, if you have a question about, you know, you said you've worked with some great leaders, do you have sort of what I would call a circle of elders or a council of elders, they may not be older than you, that you lean on um, when you're looking to run things by or get some advice or you've hit a particular sticky issue at work? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, that's one of the reasons I think I sit in this chair today is because of the coaches and mentors that have been before me and that are around me now. Uh, I have a whole group of individuals that I can call from different backgrounds, different experiences. I mean, it could be as simple as some of my childhood friends to people in the industry. Uh, you know, certainly the, the person who I call on the most when uh, I'm, I'm concerned or when I need help is my wife. I mean, she's my best advisor. Um, really the power behind everything at home and, 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 and me, you know, what I will say is that I think that's important that you have people that you can reach out to and have that release valve. One of the things I did early on, you know, on my personal side, my two boys, I think you all know I have a 24 year old, 20 year old. Um, I created this, this Knights of the round table for them. And I found, um, five individuals, uh, that I trust. Um, got their cell phones and emails and all that. And, and I introduced them to my boys. These are men and women. Um, and I said, hey, look, you know, when you don't want to talk to me or you don't want to talk to mom, here are five people you can reach out to to have any conversation. So I not only do that in my personal life, but I do it in my professional life. Uh, and it doesn't mean that I always take other people's advice, but I think it's always good to have vectors. It's kind of like in selling. When we're selling an account, um, I love vector selling. I love getting multiple points of information from the SD community, from the CSM, from the sales rep, from uh, the channel team, you know, all these different vectors. It, it really gives me the truth. So I can actually read that all together and say, okay, this is really what's going on. Uh, because it doesn't mean that people are not holding things back or it doesn't mean that um, people are, in, are, are lying or anything like that. What it means is, People just hear things differently. And I think it's important that we have different vectors, not only in our personal life, but our professional. So, Bill, how, you know, one of the things that everybody talks about sort of is work-life balance, right? Everybody's always chasing that elusive work-life balance. So, which is hard. And as you grow and in, in more in your career, I think to reach certain levels, it becomes harder. How have you found what tricks, what advice do you have to give people that you do carve out that very important, we were talking about it earlier today, carve out that time for yourself um, to just have a reset, to have a conversation with somebody? Um, how, as you've advanced in your career, how do you capture that time? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm laughing because about what I'm about to say is um, <laughs> surround yourself with women. Um, and, and the reason you surround yourself with women is they're the best multitaskers in the world. Um, you know, I have a great wife. I have a great uh, chief of staff. I've got uh, great leaders on my team uh, and because, one, they've taught me incredible skills. One of the skills they've taught me is obviously the skill of multitasking, but they're also the skill of calendaring, the skill of making sure that what's in your calendar. I mean, right now, if I was to go to everybody on this call and say, show me your calendar. Your calendar tells me, your count. Yes, Catherine is incredible. Your calendar tells me what's important to you. That's all you have to do is look at your calendar. I remember giving advice to somebody. Unfortunately, he was going through a very challenging time in his family, which ultimately led to a divorce. And you know, he was before the divorce. He was asking me, he's like, Bill, I just don't get it. I kept grab my time, and I that, and I, I asked him to show me his calendar, and you know, he was doing you know, fantasy football for four hours on a Saturday and then golfing for four hours on a Sunday. And I was like, how's that working out for your kids and wife? Um, and he's like, you got a point. Well, I got a point, but he didn't change. Um, so what I would say to you is that your calendar will drive what's important to you, whether it's, you know, working out, whether it's doing whatever. And by the way, I don't do a good job in all those areas, uh, but I try to do my best to uh, have that work-life balance. I will tell you, I think both my boys would say, um, even though I had an opportunity to have uh, some, you know, pretty good jobs, uh, they knew my job one was making sure that I was 
um, present uh, for them and for mom. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things, Bill, you've talked about some things that you say a lot. One of the things that you say that's always um, one of your Billisms is you say, get curious. Um, you say that a lot. Um, and so I want to know, you know, why is that important to you? And how, and did someone give that advice to you that made you sort of adopt sort of that motto and that, that phrase and that way of quite frankly, carrying yourself and going about your business? How did that become part of your values? I, I would say to you that first of all, a lot of my billisms are really my mentorisms. I mean, I just go steal it from all my mentors, and coaches, because all I am is just a tapestry of all these incredible leaders. And I can even name people on this call who have, have made me a, a better leader and a, a better human being, a better father, a better husband, go down the laundry list. What I will say to you is that I've had uh, a mentor actually brought that up and I just grabbed the whole of it because I heard him say it once. I'm like, yeah, that's really interesting. And it, really what it does is it shows, um, it shows that you have a growth mindset. It shows that you're vulnerable. Uh, it shows that you have authentic interests. Uh, and, and really, that's what it's about is, you know, do you have that life learning posture? Uh, are you getting curious about, OK, what is going on below the waterline? Uh, and, and look, we, we need to attack processes, not people. Uh, we need to look at the process and say, how is the process broken? Because I don't think anybody comes to work and says, hey, today I'm going to come up and screw up everything. I think they come to work to say, how can I actually fix things? Uh, how can I advance them? So that's what I always you know, use that line of, hey, why don't we go get curious about what's going on? Uh, what can we do to fix and, and make ourselves better? So with that in mind, I want to just switch a little bit and talk more about your work experiences. What's the biggest mistake you've ever made at work and how did you overcome it? Well, we how long do we have? <laughs> you have another half an hour. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we have other topics to get to. Yeah, I, I will tell you that uh, I've made I've made a lot of mistakes uh, in my career, uh, and and I will tell you that uh, I can't even go into all of them. I mean, whether it's um, well, let me let me give one. I, I assume that all are aware, and that's a big mistake. What do I mean by assume all are aware? Is play the game of telephone. Uh, next time you're at, you know. A dinner with your family or next time you're at um, a dinner with with business colleagues if there's more than three people you know wish for something in each other's ear and go around the table and see how it ends up by the time it gets to you and when you think about it you know at, at, at talk desk and even at many other companies i've been at there's many layers from the ceo all the way down to the individual contributor and it could be in some cases you know five layers i mean when i, I was part of some bigger companies it was as many as 20. Uh, you know, at the HPs and the semantics and that. And, you know, you think what's going happening here is actually getting translated here, and it's not. Um, and I think there's an opportunity for us to communicate more. Um, that is why I think it's important for leaders uh, to invert the org chart and that we work for them versus they work for us. I think it's important that, um, you know, you, you go and you actually um, go and find out what's going on below the waterline um, and, and, and really get, um, get dirty, get dirty and in interacting with prospects and customers and partners and employees. And, and in, a, in the opportunity I've had out in the field, you know, I do listen, I take notes, I ask, you know, what are things that, you know, you would recommend now, by the way, for those that have, you know, been with me and I've taken notes and you've given me feedback, I haven't ignored, I'm still trying to execute on all of them. Uh, some of them I can't. Uh, and you say, well, why won't you? Well, it just takes time. Uh, but others, you know, we're moving on very, very quickly. Uh, so your your input matters. And I would just encourage all of you, if you don't have a manager that has that open mindset to have that collaborative uh, conversation, um, we got to coach that manager because we want you to help us run this company. I, I know I do. So let's let's talk about um, your whatever two hundred and ninety six days and maybe set six hours and maybe maybe now forty five minutes that you've been here. Um, 
looking back over that past time, what are you most proud of uh, that you were able to accomplish, that the team was able to accomplish? So what are the things when you look back? And again, you and I have talked about that you are really a forward-looking person. You don't you don't sit back a lot, but taking this moment to look back, um, what are some things that you're like, yeah, we nailed that? I think that the team has done an amazing job of coming together. I think that uh, I hear about, you know, the, the talk desk village and, and look, I've leveraged that. What do I mean by leverage that is one, a five-year vision. You know, we have a five-year vision, which, you know, it's always nice to see where we're going versus where we are. Um, I think that the fast team coming together, the top leaders in the company having a voice um, and representing everybody. I mean, it's it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to compare it to Congress because they're completely dysfunctional. But, you know, the 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 thing that's nice is that um, you have leaders that are supposed to represent their job is to represent each and every one of your departments and how you feel. I think us putting together the victory plan, the, the vital few things that we're going to focus on versus the trivial many. Let me say that again vital few versus trivial many. Uh, I think breaking down silos and collaboration, you know, bringing the teams together uh, to align, identifying, you know, what are the inefficiencies? Like I said, this is not um, a personnel issue. This is a process issue. We have to unpack the processes that are hurting the people. Um, And that is one thing that I will continue to do. Uh, I will make sure that every single process is uh, looked at at current state, desired state, do a gap analysis, and then do, you know, breaking that and just saying, no, we're going to fix that. Uh, because that is what is going to help us get to the, the level of world class. Because right now, um, we have an opportunity to be a world class enterprise software company. And some might say, well, Bill, you don't think we are? No, no, no. I didn't say that we're not. In some areas, we may be. But overall, the whole entire company, there's always opportunity to improve. So what, looking back again, what's one thing you talked about a lot of what went well, and I would agree with you that that's been, again, as for those of us who've been here before and after sort of watching some of that unfold um, has, and again, I'm looking forward to the victory plan and all of the strategic planning, but what's one thing that you wished could have gone differently or one thing that you thought, wow, if I could do that again, I would have done it differently, or I wish that went better. Well, the one thing that I always want to do better at is performance. Uh, you know, I, I mean, look, I, I like companies that go 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 quarters in a row. Uh, that's the kind of companies that I like to be a part of. Uh, and that's all in our in our hands. It's, it's up to us what we achieve. And, you know, I will tell you that when you look out there, you know, what I always ask is what's holding us back? Um, What's holding back the SC or the rep or the channel or the CSM? I mean, again, I'm not, I'm probably missing somebody, but I want everybody to look at their roles and say, what is holding you back? Um, And what I would, I would just, you know, submit to all of you is don't get distracted. And what I mean by don't get distracted, it's very easy to get distracted by something that we believe that we need to be doing. And, And let me give you an example. If I'm an account executive, I better be building pipeline and I better be closing new business and I better be expanding and I better be making sure renewals are happening. Other than those four things, everything else should fall off your plate because that is how you're going to be measured. You're going to be measured on what new business you closed, what pipeline you created, what expansion you've done, and have you helped set the company up for a renewal? And then you say, well, Bill, how am I going to get to the support ticket or the billing or the invoices, whatever? We have departments that should be doing that. And if they're not, you're going to say, well, well, Bill, you know, I should help that. No, no, no. What happens then is you create a culture of codependence. We don't need a culture of codependence. What we need is we need to fix those things and let the experts who do those jobs fix those things. Because Cali, the finance team, can't come in and build pipeline for me. Nothing against them, but the best pipeline builders are my SEs, my reps, and my chat, Right. This support organization isn't going to come in and close my renewal for me. That's what my CSM team is doing. I need to make sure that the product builds the product, support delivers support, finance does billing and invoicing and and budget and all that, and everybody does what they do. It doesn't mean we should have siloed organization. What it means is I'm not going to play the punter when I'm the quarterback, 
right? Let the punter be the punter and I'll be the quarterback. Because otherwise, we get over each other's lanes and then nobody knows what they're doing. So, Bill, how do we drive that alignment? How do we as employees help drive some of that efficiency, help drive some of that consistency, help drive some of that stay in your lane and as one of your other billisms, do what you do best, but also be mindful of what others are doing so that we are all one team? Well, what I think the communication happens, but I think there has to be a level of trust is that uh, and what I mean by a level of trust is uh, sometimes we also have to fail. And, and sometimes we have to, and some might not like what I'm about to say, but sometimes we have to let things spill out on the street and then say, okay, what are we going to go to do fix it? Uh, because, you know, like I said, do I believe that there's things that um, other areas or uh, areas of the company can do better here or there? Sure. Here's what I know I can't do. I can't code. Okay. I can't code software. Um, if you want me to code software, it's not going to end well for this company. If you want me to do billing and invoice, not going to end well for this company. Yeah. If you want me to go and hire people, Elizabeth, and onboard, it's not going to go well. I know what I do well, and I'm going to stay in that lane. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to coordinate with you, Elizabeth, or coordinate with Ray. Or co I mean, we should always be doing that. But let's have trust that these individuals are going to go and solve the problems. And by the way, our job, and I welcome it. Our job is to, you know, have the um, open mindset to hear and not think that we're being attacked. Like, you know, goodness knows I have an incredible relationship with my CFO with Sydney. I wouldn't have I've done three companies with her, right? Make no mistake. She will tell me when I'm doing things wrong. And I don't mind that, right? I love when she tells me, Bill, you're failing here, you're failing there, you're failing there. And she's not personally attacking me. She's basically just saying, these are areas that we need to correct. And I'm like, good. You know what that shows me? She cares. Yeah. Because when people stop talking to you and start telling you, you know, how they can, how you, they like to see you improve, then they don't care anymore. Right. Right. So that's interesting. That brings me to, uh, before we get to sort of the look forward is, um, you know, one of the values that I live by is just assume positive intent, right? Don't take the, assume that people are coming to the table because, again, we're all here for one goal, which is to help the company succeed. So what's a value that you, you know, what one of your strongest values that you live by every day that you bring to the table every day and bring to yourself every day? I think it's uh, say what you mean and mean what you say. I mean, there's a saying uh, that, you know, you have to have a great memory to be a good liar. I think Abraham Lincoln said that. Yeah. Uh, you have a great memory to be a good liar. Just say what you mean and mean what you say. If, if you know, I don't believe in contracts. Um, I believe in is if I shake your hand, I look in your eyes, I'm going to do it. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to come back to you and say, okay, I couldn't do it. And here's what I need to do differently. Uh, but make no mistake too. I like your, your saying, assume good intent because I'm failing every day in that. Uh, I mess up. I don't communicate something or somebody hears something differently or I didn't listen. Uh, goodness knows uh, my wife will tell you that. So, um, Is there a value or a personality trait or characteristic that you've seen in somebody that you wish you could emulate more or that you, um, you wish you could bring as part of your uh, personality? Yeah, I think uh, patience patience i don't have patience um and and that's something i've got to get better at and and the reason i have patience is that we all share one thing it's time uh and what i mean by we all share one thing is that nobody can buy time nobody can do it i mean we all share that same currency and i don't want to waste any time i want to move and accelerate and be fast yes i use that value which i love by the way i love focus plus accountability plus speed equals a top tasker. I mean, that is one of my favorite, favorite values I've ever seen at any company. So whoever came up with that should get a gold star and a bonus, but I love it. Yeah. So, but talk a little bit about that, right? Because we also want to do things well, right? We don't want to, um, we don't want to use the word, right? Because I think sometimes when people hear the word fast, um, they 
you know, sometimes quality can get left behind. So talk a little bit about that. Talk about how do we balance this need to keep moving forward and, and moving quickly and making good decisions and breaking barriers and all of that, um, along with the focus and accountability versus do it right, do it well. Yeah, I do want to go to some of the comments that are coming in right now. Uh, Reed, just thank you for that. I actually do believe <laughs> that we're not going to shake hands and just get deals. We're going to get contracts. So uh, there's my public service announcement. Um, but, you know, I, I guess maybe I'm the contrarian is I, I don't want us to fall at the altar of perfection. Um, yeah. I do go and, and, and I know there's a concept of fail fast. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, you know, let's go and, and, and iterate and try and have agile and be, you know, and move. Um, and you're right. We do have to look at, um, things, you know, in a calculated way, but sometimes I don't want us to be just paralyzed by it. It's see what we need to do, move execute. And look, will there be mistakes? Sure. But I would rather be 90% right and 10% wrong than 90% paralyzed. And it just doesn't make sense. I think we just have to move quicker uh, in everything we do. I mean, decisions. Uh, one of the things I think the team on, on that, that reports to me, Oakley News is by now is um, if I'm making more than one decision a day, I'm making too many, right? Um, we have to empower and push decisions down what do I mean by that? For some of you that don't know this in the customer journey team, uh, the entire budget for the customer journey team has been pushed down to my leaders. I only have a budget line item for one thing, and that's capital. That's it. Everything else, I let my team handle it. Let them run their budgets. Let them run their business. You know, the reality is, is that I trust them. I mean, you don't go hire people with all these great backgrounds and then... Um, tell them what to do. You hire people for them to tell you what to do. Um, I hired great people. God bless you, Samantha. Um, I hired great people so that they can tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. um, By the way, paying attention to all of you. I'm screening around, watching all of you. So he always get, does. Yeah. So, in our, so, Bill, what should we be looking forward to um, in FY25? Why should we be continuing as we always have been, this, you know, this group that's here, you know, jumping out of bed and, you know, go talk desk. What What's getting you out of bed and what words can you pass on to us about what's coming for the, the year that we should be excited about? Well, first, you got to have belief. You got to have belief. And look, I, I look at every beginning of a fiscal year as a, a time for each of us, just like the New Year's resolution. Is, you know, I, I, I usually at the end of the year have a conversation with my wife and family about, okay, what are we doing as a family in this next 12 months, right? Um, what are our goals, both, you know, financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, whatever, physically? Um, I think it's the same thing here. Talk this. Everybody has to make a decision. Come February 1, um, I think we have to decide, is this the platform for me for the next 12 months? You know, is this where I want to be? Is this where I want to spend, you know, anywhere from 10 to 12? Many of you on this call are spending 14 hours a day with our company, right? Where do I want to spend my hours? And is this the platform I want to be in? Have the courage to make that decision, whether you are you want to do it or you don't. If you don't, that's okay. I hold no judgment. It's This is a, a certain platform for a certain type of individual. So one is, do you have the belief? Two is, I think we can absolutely break out this year. I think that we have the opportunity to unlock every person's potential on this call. You know, I don't know what you're, you're here for. I don't know if you're here because... You want to do something well in the area you're doing. You want to, you know, uh, advance your career. You want to buy a lottery ticket. I have no idea, right? I'm, I'm finding out more and more as I'm in the field why everybody is here. But figure out the why. And is this the platform that you can unlock your personal and professional potential? If it is, we're excited that you're going to be on the journey because this will be a breakout year for Talk Desk. So what are the challenges, some of the challenges that you see that we may face? I mean, let's be real, right? We're going to be transparent. We're going to have a great year, but there's always challenges with every year. So what are some of the challenges you think we may face? You obviously don't have a crystal ball in front of you. And then how can we get beyond them? And, and who as people, individual contributors or people who aren't on the ELT, who do we need to and how do we go to people to help break those challenges? 
Well, I think the first thing is, you know, holding a mirror up in front of your face and making that decision on your own, right? Is, is this the platform that you want to be on? Um, you know, one thing I will tell you is I try not to have regrets. I try not to um, live in the negativity uh, because it's not going to get you anywhere. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, if, if, it, if you're waking up with headaches and stomach aches and you just can't, you know, do it anymore, do something else right? Do something else because your health and well-being, mental, physical health is the most important thing you can have. Your family, your relationships. Um, if a job is causing you angst outside of the nine to five, meaning from five to nine, it's impacting you. I would tell you, make a different decision. Mm -hmm. And what I would do is have that conversation with your manager. Let your manager know, let your leadership know, um, you know, what is causing you challenges and what can we do to fix those things, right? It might be the hours you're working. It might be, you know, you're not getting enough resources or look, we're never going to have more. I mean, I never went to a company where they're like, wow, we got way more resources than we need. Never been for <laughs> those companies, right? Never. Uh, so I think this is an opportunity for us uh, to all make our, our own decisions as we go into the new fiscal year. I'm excited about the platform. I think that this is a great opportunity for individuals to unlock their their true potential. So speaking of that and choosing different um, career paths, if you weren't doing this, if you could go back in time and you weren't, um, you know, a CRO, a COO, a president, all of this, what would you what would you be doing in your alternative, you know, in sliding doors? What would you be doing? Yeah, I mean, what I would have liked to have been doing, but didn't have the talent. I would have loved to have been a professional soccer player or something like that, but that wasn't going to happen, even though I, I played soccer. But I think, um, I think, you know, a lawyer was, uh, I was going to go to law school um, until I realized like, oh my gosh, all that schooling uh, for all those lawyers, Regis and David and Luis. Me. I mean, thank, thank Oh, yeah, that's right. You, I forgot you. Not, not being right. well, a recovering lawyer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I look at all of you. I'm like, yeah, wow. I mean, that's, that's extraordinary. Same thing with doctors. Like what, what you guys do, um, pretty impressive. So for me, that's probably what I would have tried to do and probably would have failed miserably at it. Uh, so I decided to go down the path of, you know, pushing software. So it's worked out. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think we'll keep you um, so my final question for you is, it's your 80th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not there, but go ahead. Uh-oh, did we lose a list? She's frozen. In the right time. It's my 80th birthday. <laughs> and what does it mean? What do people say about you? Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I froze. Yeah, what are what are people saying about you at your 80th birthday party? Okay, my my father in law is 89. My mother in law is 85. They've been living with us for the last nine years now. We have the privilege of of them staying with us, and and obviously we'll uh, we'll take care of them until we can walk them to the kingdom. But you know, here's what I will say to you: is that um, and they've been married 60, 66, 67 years. So just extraordinary, right? Uh, so what if I actually make it to 80, I'll be really happy. But if I make it to 80, um, you know, here's what I hope that somebody says, and I hope my boys say this is, um, you know, he left a legacy. Mm -hmm. He left a legacy. Uh, and that, that legacy could be the impact that I need on my own boys, my wife, my family, the community. And then in the professional world, I hope that, you know, somebody's going to put something on LinkedIn that says, Hey, Unfortunately, Bill's, uh, Bill, Bill, you know, did his last customer visit. Um, and everybody says, you know what? He helped me with my career. He helped me with my decisions. Uh, that's the most important thing to me is did, did I, did I make people feel better than they did before I met them? I love that. Um, that's all the questions I had. I didn't know if there's anything else on your mind that you want to leave some parting words. We've got a lot of people on this call and I, Again, thank you all for taking time out of your day to listen to Bill and I chat. But, um, oh, there's from Casey. What keeps you up at night? Um, my wife's cats. Um, 
I think they're their they're hers, not mine. Um, no, I mean, really, I, I sleep pretty well now. Uh, before, when I was younger, uh, my mind would just always be racing. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, um, I think that now as I've matured, uh, things don't, you know, wind up in my head and wind me up and that, uh, it, it's definitely been, it been, been something that's helped me, um, yeah, keep cheering up at night. Remy's prison meal. Oh, question. Remy's prison meal question is if you have one meal left to live, uh, left to eat, what would it be? Well, I can tell you with no hesitation in my voice, definitely my wife's cooking. And I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm you know, going to the crowd here, but right. I really, I, I mean, I, I eat out a lot because of my travel and that okay. it, um, is what I will say to you is that, um, you know, she does any meal from her. I mean, I, I have not had a bad meal. Um, and I, you know, I'm very excited about favorite book, uh, who W H O my favorite book and why is it one of my favorite books um you know i will say to you that um the number one thing we do is hiring and if you have an opportunity to read that book it talks all about hiring it tells you all about why we do the panel process um you know there's so many things um that i would just tell you uh really go and understand that especially if you're in a uh, hiring, um, uh, a hiring capacity, man, lots of questions coming in. Yeah. So Amy Payne, what, and that, the, Amy, our brands as usual, um, what's, what's the best place or your most favorite place that you've ever traveled? I know one of them for sure. Um, yeah, they, Amy, outside, Amy, of Tur- outside of Turks and Caicos, what's your favorite place to travel? Yeah. So, um, Amy teed that one up cause it's her favorite place too, yeah. but yeah, I, I love, I love the Caribbean. Um, and I, I love that we're going to be hosting some of our top uh, individuals in the company uh, in Turks, um, you know, this May. Uh, when I look at Europe, uh, Barcelona and Barcelona was my favorite city and still is. But now Barcelona and Lisbon are tied. Like it is two of my I mean, I'll tell you, if I could rewind 30 years ago, I would move to Lisbon. I mean, I would. I'm not playing to the crowd. What an amazing, amazing uh, a city. And then, like I said, I love Barcelona in your, in a, in a Mia, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, in APAC, you know, it, probably, you know, Japan, you know, Tokyo and that area. Um, don't get me wrong. I love Singapore. I love ANZ, but you know, if I really had to pick one in each area. It would be Japan or Tokyo. It would be Barcelona, Lisbon, and then it would be Turks and Caicos in the United States. Well, I know you guys, you know, Caribbean. <laughs> You're, we're getting a lot of a lot of love for Lisbon. I was fortunate to go there last summer as well, and, and loved it as well. Extraordinary, sure. There's nothing, everything. Yeah. Um, all right. We've got one more learning question. Um, how do you wait? I'm scrolling down. How do you prefer to learn something new? Oh, so this is something that we're looking at this year, Bill. Is how do people learn? Right. So, are you a reader? Are you a talker? Are you a watch a video? What's the best? How do you learn new things? Uh, what I can do all the above. I, I like all the above, whether it's talking to somebody and listening to them, whether it's watching the video or wa- re- reading. So I like to do all three. But I do recognize it's interesting because my oldest son um, doesn't like reading uh, and and really learns more from visual and videos and talking. Uh, so that's one thing I have learned that not everybody um, learns the same way. Uh, and that's that's something that's important in leadership. But uh, that's how I do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to wind down. So, Bill, thank you. I know this, you know, tough time of year, good time of year, exciting time of year, ending up um, really strong and starting a new year. Um, but I'm going to leave with one of my favorite Billisms, which we all want you to go out and do what you do best. Um so thank you, Bill. Thank you, everybody who took time out to join us. And um, looking forward to FY25 for sure. Thanks, team. Let's close out strong. Talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.